Hello and welcome to Electric Focus and today I'm going to talk about the long journey I did recently in sub-zero temperatures. How did it impact range overall and also how much did the total trip cost? So let's get straight into the video. Okay so first of all let's talk about range. So the whole trip which was down from Scotland to Cambridgeshire and then back was 754 miles so that's a full round trip and it was in very cold weather so minus temperatures minus five at one point and didn't get much above freezing for the whole trip so it was a long journey it was motorway most of the way the average speed of the trip was 60 miles an hour so what we're talking about here is the worst case scenario for a battery electric vehicle Batteries don't like very cold weather, they don't like very hot weather, they perform at their best at ambient temperatures. So this was a good test for me. Now I went with my eyes open to this trip expecting it to be significant, the impact on the battery. If you look at a website that I use quite a lot called EV Database, and I'll put the link below in the video, I find it really useful for giving me a good idea of what to expect on different types of journeys because it gives you some real range expected figures for your car and I found that it's pretty accurate but I haven't done really a long trip at those kind of temperatures and actually what it says on EV database is that I should expect to get around 170 miles range in the I-PACE now this is down from what I normally get on average I say around 225 miles so quite a big drop, 170 miles. So that's two miles per kilowatt hour. And what it actually averaged out to be was around 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. So that's actually better than I expected. So that's more like a range on a full battery of 195 miles when I'm normally used to getting around 225. So it's, it's actually about a 13.4% drop in range. So it's a bit better than I expected. So the whole trip then 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour on average which is a range on a full battery of 195 miles and then that started to make me think well how does that compare to the rest of the year so i downloaded some data from the jaguar app i only went back to may that's only because i couldn't seem to go back further than may but at least it gives us an idea so let's have a look at some of the stats for the rest of the year we'll look on this graph now so May, June and July 2022 all averaged around 246 miles on a full battery. That's 2.9 miles per kilowatt hour. And then in August and September it dropped slightly to 237 miles full range which is 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. And then in October it drops a bit further so surely down to weather I would think. 229 miles which is 2.7 miles per kilowatt hour and then in November it drops further down again as the temperatures start to drop that's 212 miles which is on the full battery which is more like 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour and then December and this is so far by the way um, this is really up to the trip I did which was just last weekend we're on 17th of December today so we're looking at 195 miles and 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour as I said. So on average since May this year up to this point of December that is actually 231 miles. So as I said probably if you take the rest of the year then it's going to be about what I said that sort of 225 miles. So as you can see although I talk about range being on average 225 miles at some points in the year the range can be higher than that and on individual trips sometimes it can get up to the WLT figure of that sort of 290 miles range on a very short journey on a very warm day but it certainly gives you an idea how range fluctuates depending on the temperature. So I hope that was useful in terms of that but now let's have a look at costs. So the whole journey 754 miles and let's remember again this is going to be a worst case scenario for costs one because prices are uh, real high at the moment with the energy crisis anyway and particularly charging on the go so 
I didn't really do anything special in terms of, terms of charging on the go. I didn't look for any major discounts. I was getting a little bit of a discount with Octopus Universe because you get 5% off on Ionity, but I pretty much just charged at motorway services. It's a bit like when you're going on a long journey in a petrol car and you just charge at motorway services and you know you're going to be paying a premium for that. So it was um, another reason why it was, a, it was a bad scenario in terms of costs. Also, I did charge at home to 100%. So I did have the benefit of cheap rates at home, seven and a half pence overnight tariff. But actually for the rest of the trip, it was all at premium rates. I was charging on ultra fast charging most of the time. There was one rapid charge I did on the last leg of the journey at GridServe. And also I didn't have the benefit of being able to charge at a cheap rate at the other destination that I got to uh, in Cambridgeshire because we had an Airbnb which didn't have any charging available. By the way, if you do stay in Airbnbs, you can now search for properties that have EV charging, which is very useful. And I have stayed in a property that had EV charging. So basically then you get free charging if they include it, which they did in, in my case. But I didn't have the benefit of that. I had to charge on the go to get back and I charged again at a premium destination. So it is the worst case scenario this for charging. But let's have a look at the cost and how much it costs overall. So we'll have a look at the table here. So I won't go through every detail here. Let's just look at the, the main numbers. So charging at home cost me £6.35 because that was on my cheap rate tariff at 7.5 pence a kilowatt hour. The rest of the journey, 66 pence per kilowatt hour for the destinations I went to. So the total journey was 85 pounds, 73 pence for that part of the journey. And then on my return leg, it was again 66 pence a kilowatt hour at Peterborough. And I didn't get any charge at Weatherby because of the charger problem. So I got a free charge there. I suppose that does need to be taken into account, but that's the reality. This is how much I spent. And then at Gretna, it was, it was 65 pence a kilowatt hour. And that's because it was a rapid charger rather than ultra rapid. So for that total part of the journey, I spent 60 pounds, 76 pence. So that's a grand total of 146 pounds, 49. So let's look at now the pence per mile for that whole journey. So we take the total cost, what I paid for that journey, 146 pounds, 49 pence. We then take the total mileage for that journey of 754 miles. We need to then add on what I had left in the battery because we're taking the cost that I paid for charging to 100% at home as well, don't forget. So we need to take that, add that 15 miles on. So 769 miles in total at £146.49. That gives a pence per mile of 19 pence per mile. Now, don't forget though, I did get a free charge in there. So let's say we add in £35 for that free charge I got. You're then talking about around 236 pence per mile. So remember, this is a worst case scenario for charging. Premium rates, um, out on motorway services. It's a bit like when you go on a long journey in a petrol car and you stop at motorway services, you know you're going to pay a lot more than normal. So I would think it's pretty comparable to a petrol journey actually. But I only do this now and again. Most of the time, I'd say 95% of the time, I'm charging at home on my cheap rate tariff of 7.5 pence per mile. So, uh, sorry, 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour, which means I'm getting around 2.7 pence per mile using my car most of the time. So I hope that was useful. That's the reality of costs and charging on the go in very cold weather when prices are through the roof. And also I hope that was useful having a look at the whole journey and how cold weather impacts on the range. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll speak to you soon.